Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Drew Griffin here for Pottstown Local. And on behalf of the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce, super excited to be hanging out again with everybody uh, on this Chamber Chat Live. Uh, to the right of me, I've got Bill Vitiello, who is the Institutional Manager at the Victory Bank, who is also the co-host of Chamber Chat. And uh, we've got a special guest today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pass this over to Bill uh, to take over the rest of the show. And I'll see you guys at the end of the show. So uh, welcome to the program, Bill. And uh, I'll catch you guys at the end of the show. Thanks, Drew. Thank yeah, thanks, Drew. I appreciate it, everybody. Welcome to Chamber Chat Live with the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce. My name is Bill Vitiello. I am the Institutional and Business Development Manager at the Victory Bank in Limerick. Before we begin, though, we always we would like to thank Drew. Drew puts it all together. So thank you, Drew, for doing it. Uh, Drew's from Delicious Marketing, if you don't know that already. Also like to thank Eileen. Eileen is uh, monitoring the chat and comments section back there at the Facebook bunker in <laughs> Pottstown. <laughs> if that's a thing, I don't know. I give it a different name every time. It sounds, it sounds funny. Uh, and then the Ben Exchange, your friends for business benefits. Thanks for their longtime sponsorship of Chamber Chat. So I'm here with a special guest today who's going to talk about an important topic, and that's working from home and some of the challenges uh, and some of the key points here that uh, we could all be aware of. Uh, so let me make that introduction. So my guest today is Brian Piquel. Uh, Brian is co-founder of KP Interface. He founded that back in 2006. Uh, they are a firm that provides high-level outsourced managed IT service to small and medium-sized businesses throughout the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, his services provided by KP Interface include, but are not limited to, assessment, strategic planning, implementation, management, and support. Uh, currently, Brian is the CEO, and he's responsible for the vision, planning, and management of all aspects of the KP Interface, including the sales, operation, and finance. Through his technology leadership, KP, KP Interface stands behind its promise to consistently deliver innovative technology solutions and I expert IT support. I need, Eileen, if you're listening, I think I need a teleprompter. I think that'd be a great <laughs> investment to make for Chamber Chat Live. <laughs> so uh, my guest today, Brian Pickell. Brian, welcome to Chamber Chat Live. Well, thank you very much, Bill. I'm happy to be here and excited to be here. Uh, KPI has been a part of the Chamber since last June, and we've been participating as much as we can. So I want to thank you for, uh, for inviting us here today. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and thank you for being a guest again. Uh, I know we've met a few times and, um, uh, you know, it's amazing. I'm sure when we go through the list, how many people we have in common with one another. So it's a, it's a great community, but your business uh, expands beyond the community. Um, you know, certainly again, through the mid-Atlantic region. But I want to go back to the beginning because the community is kind of where you start it all, right? Like you don't automatically go, you know, as this big uh, IT consulting firm, you know, through the Mid-Atlantic without starting in your own community. So can you give me a little bit of history on how KP started? Sure. Well, I live here in the Phoenixville area and I have um, been, you know, living in this area from Norristown to Pottstown most of my life. And in 2006, my co-founder, Matt Kirby, and I started the company. Uh, in an effort to really deliver premier uh, technology consulting and services to what we thought was an underserved target market, which was a small and mid-sized business market. Uh, we wanted to bring a, a very first class level of uh, strategic planning, uh, you know, project design, and, and support for that area. So uh, Matt lived in Boyertown. I lived in Phoenixville. We settled on Limerick, which was kind of in between us. And we've been there ever since. Um, so we've been there for 14 years. It's got you know easy access to 422, which enables us to go either up towards Pottstown and Reading, or down towards King of Prussia and Philadelphia and beyond. Um, so it, it's really a great spot. You're not far from anybody, and you can serve uh, again. You can serve this region real well. But of course, with technology now, we're serving uh, people beyond the Philadelphia region, up and down the East Coast, and even out to the West Coast. Now we have clients that are based here and have satellite offices across the country. So we're able to support them as well. Yeah, it's amazing how much you've grown over the years. And I know, uh, you know, it's it's probably not a new challenge for you necessarily, but probably a challenge for a lot of us uh, making this transition to working from home, right? 
um, right. if something was ex that was uh, expected for sure. And it was mm -hmm. kind of forced upon us. So I guess with that comes some challenges. Sure. Um, can you describe what some of the challenges may be? And then we'll kind of go into maybe how we can correct some of those uh, for the future or set ourselves up for success with that. A absolutely. Um, you know, we're the type of business that likes to be uh, in person, believe it or not. And we like to be in our office working together as a team. So even for us, to work home on a, on a continued basis was new. We've done it. We had our test trial runs over, you know, snow days in the past where we were able to bring our phones home and use our voice over IP network to connect and still work, et cetera. But what happened that week of, of March 16th and uh, is that everybody was really ordered home. And uh, what happened was for those first two or three weeks, we were, of course, were challenged with people that we were serving our clients who may not have been used to working at home and may have not gone through that test run like we had before. So we spent a lot of our time for the first two or three weeks guiding people, helping both the businesses get up set up properly and both the end users set up properly from home to ensure they could access everything they needed to be productive from home. And after about two to three weeks, things began to calm down a little bit. People got used to uh, you know, remoting in using different tools and technology and then uh, became more accustomed. Now, what has happened, of course, we're still supporting those environments. So we're still supporting people with issues working from home, and we're happy to do that. Uh, but everybody's adjusting a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely a different scenario. I, you know, I'm a I'm a real people person. Uh, so for me to kind of do this remotely is a little different for me. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't come without its, you know, being in a little bit of an uncomfortable zone. Uh, you know, I have a face for audio, so it's one of those things where I'm I'm okay doing the podcast. I'm okay having a uh, you know a phone conversation. I'm even okay in in person, but doing the whole camera thing is weird. And I know a lot of people. Um, like right now, I'm staring at a lens. I'm not actually staring at you. So it's it's no. just it's different. We're, we're all pushed out of our our, our comfort zone here. Mm -hmm. um, but what are some of the challenges when people are doing this remotely and doing these Zoom type things? Uh, can you give some tips on presentation? Can you give some tips on uh, tech, how to use the tech to your advantage, please? Sure, sure. I, I think, you know, I think it starts with, with technology in a sense because you need to have the foundation to offer proper connectivity and a good experience for the people on the other side of your camera um, and your microphone so that you can be seen and heard clearly. Um, so, and, and myself included, I had some challenges myself. Uh, you can imagine I have three children. They were all home from school, from college, high school, and grade school. I used to work downstairs in an, in an office we have downstairs. And due to my kids being home, I got pushed from that room to another room and now up to another little office I have off my bedroom. So I had to make sure that my technology was set up properly, make sure I had proper internet connectivity, make sure I had proper wireless connectivity. I'm in a little kind of uh, corner of the house that sometimes it's hard to get a proper signal. So what I did is after realizing that I'm not getting a great signal, I went out to Amazon, ordered a couple of new uh, technology, new wireless technology to ensure I had better connectivity. Um, so first thing is making sure your technology is in place, um, making sure that you have, you know, your computers in good working order, your monitor, speakers, obviously now good webcam and camera uh, and microphone. Um, some people need a good printer or scanner too, and, and that can be important too. So making sure you have that. Um, again, I mentioned wireless has to be secure and reliable. Um, your internet too, you gotta remember now, now today, we have so many devices in our homes connecting to the internet. It used to be just your, your, uh, you know, your computer, and then we added phones, and then we added tablets, and now we have smart devices like Google Home and Amazon Alexa, et cetera. And now we have TVs, of course we have the video games. So everything's taking a piece of that bandwidth that you have, most likely from Comcast or Verizon in this neck of the woods. And you have to just be mindful that, you know, your connection may not be high enough. You may have to look at that, consider that, and then maybe upgrade. Or um, I noticed the other day, somebody had a, a low speed with Comcast. And, you know, I don't know why. Um, it was a friend of mine that, that works with us. And I said, listen, I think you should reach out to Comcast. Talk to them. And they may just need to reboot your router. They may need to, to fix your connection but you should be getting a lot more bandwidth. So once you have all of those things in place and you can make a great connection, you can be heard and seen great, 
Then you've got to consider, well, what do I do once I do connect? What happens once I am on uh, camera? I'm no TV personality. I didn't spend a lot of time behind the camera. I'm not an internet uh, video person. Uh, most of my business was done in person and sometimes over the phone. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, you've got to be mindful of a few things. One thing is eye contact. I have a little message above my camera here. It says, look here. It's a nice reminder uh, to make sure I'm looking and engaging with the people on the other side of the camera. Sometimes, uh, even if it's your own people, in your own office. It's, you know, they're looking for leadership, they're looking for people providing direction. Um, you should be, you should be more trusted when you're looking directly at somebody. So you have to have these little reminders to help you out. The other thing is make sure that you don't have any background noise. Uh, my kids are old enough that they know, hey, when I'm working from, you know, 7.30 till six o'clock at night and up in my office, you gotta be quiet. Um, I'm, I'm often on calls and that can be very distracting. Now we happen to have uh, a dog as well. And, um, you know, sometimes they bark, but that's downstairs. You can't hear it from up here. But people have different things going on a lot. Now, most people are pretty uh, patient with that nowadays. They understand they're working from home. Some people have small children, some people have babies. Um, they understand that. But we have to do what we can do to bring our best uh, effort forward to so, make sure that the experience is good. Yeah, so I'm, I'm smirking right now because I have, I've had this conversation on mute for half the time because my neighbor is getting his lawn cut. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it's all kinds of loud or would be all kinds of loud. So well, I, it's you... funny, I just asked my son to mow the lawn today and I, I probably shouldn't have, but hopefully it won't be too loud if he starts. So yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you're right about kind of assessing the different moving parts. I know for me personally, so like I have Comcast and I pay for the 300 megabytes uh, per second. I did a speed test on it. I was over 300 megabytes uh, right here at the desktop. But then I went on Wi-Fi to the other part of my house and it was only pulling like 15 megabytes per second. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I know I need to upgrade my Wi-Fi or get maybe get some kind of uh, mesh, you know, system or yep. something like that. So, um, so do you have any recommendations? I'm not asking for maybe product uh, specific, yeah. but, you know, well, some sure. for, for that. Sure. I was using just, you know, the, the built in products with my computer and I was using Verizon's router as my wireless at the time when I first started. And that was good enough when I was home by myself and everybody else was at school. It was fine. But like you, I realized that my throughput wasn't where it needed to be. So um, on the advice of my VP of operations, um, he suggested getting a mesh network, just like you said. Um, we both happen to be using um, the... Uh, Oh my gosh, what is it called? Netgear products, that's what it is. And we're using Netgear's Orbi products, it's called. And that provides uh, a mesh network throughout the house uh, and even beyond a little bit. So outside, like you said, sometimes you're at home, you might wanna be on the deck, some of that. You can even work out there. I do that once in a while. Um, you know, get out there and get some fresh air and continue working, but you have to have the proper wireless. I also went from a 2.4 gigahertz signal and network to a 5.0 gigahertz signal. And what that does is give you greater bandwidth and better connectivity. So um, that certainly helps. And, and like you said, I was limited. I was limited by a 2.4 gigahertz uh, network. And when I upgraded everything, uh, it got a lot better. No, that's great. Yeah, and I know I'm looking forward to upgrading as well. Because like I said, the other, you have so many devices pulling in information and it just, it slows the whole scene down. Plus my wife's at home working. You know, so sure. we have that that consider. She's connected with uh, her her um, parent company in Germany, so she needs a good mm -hmm. connection there. So, uh, so yeah, a lot of lot of considerations there. Um, sure. So, so what else? So you so you have so let's let's shift focus just for a moment off of the individual sure. and uh, sure. maybe onto companies. And you said uh, specifically for business owners or uh, leaders or CEOs. Uh, what other type of assessments or things do you recommend? Not only now, but as we start to transition back and maybe there's a there's this like hybrid type um, mm -hmm. culture where you got some mm -hmm. people in the office, some people not in the office, or what if everybody just winds up being remotely, you know, on a permanent basis, if you can give some right. recommendations or thoughts there, please. Yeah, I wish I had the silver bullet though, and I could just say, hey, this is what every company needs to do. You need to have flex days on Thursdays and Fridays, and you need to have you know, uh, this policy to work from home, et cetera. But the truth of the matter is what I discovered as a CEO 
and talking to other CEOs is that every business is going to be a little bit different. Um, now, that being said, there are certainly good guidelines that you can provide for people working from home. Uh, the very first thing I, I think is, is paramount is having the right people on your staff. Now, I know that's not a technology answer and it's not you know, something you can just do overnight, but you know, in talking to some people, it's critical to have people you can trust to not be in an office environment, work on their own, be independently accountable and, and get the work done. Um, so that's one thing, that's probably the most important thing. And at KPI, what we do is I interview everybody who still works for the company. Anybody who gets hired, I interview. But I never, I rarely ask them technical questions. My questions are about who they are, what virtues they possess, what kind of attitude they're bringing to business and, and to work every day. And, um, and that really tells me whether they have the well-rounded professional skills that we're looking for in our people. So that's number one. Number two, um, give your employees the tools they need. So if you're going to have them work from home, make sure they can be productive. If they've got a slow computer or a printer that doesn't work or a bad internet connection, we've got to work with them to make sure all the basics are in place and all the, um, the connectivity tools that they're going to need are in place. Um, third, set a policy. Uh, KPI right now is revamping our, our work from home policy. Uh, we were pretty much a company that worked you know, in the office, but people could work from home from you know, time to time if they needed. We didn't really have a set uh, a policy either way, but we're revamping that now. And we wanna make sure that people have expectations of what's expected of them. For example, do you expect people to be able, you know, to be ready to go at eight in the morning? Do you expect their Microsoft Teams uh, application to be open at all times so you can always know where they are or if they're available. Um, you know, so those, those kind of things I think are really important. You know, how should you dress is even important. You know, some people say, well, you know, you're at home, it's not a big deal. Well, I've seen everything from people being in a suit at home or working remotely during this COVID time or being in a t-shirt and maybe even pajamas. And not, thank God, not my company, but you know, you have to have an expectation. Is your expectation of people should be in a and a, and a you know business casual um, or whatever it might be. Those things are important for people just to know what does the company expect from me when I'm working from home. Um, the other thing is you have to measure productivity some way, shape, or form. You have to measure it. Every company, every manager's got a different way to do that. Some people have stats. We have stats on all of our people as far as how much time they put in, whether it's uh, billable, whether uh, it's productive, etc. So we see stats all the time of how productive we are. Um, but every company is going to be different in that regard. Uh, but the bottom line is you've got to be able to measure productivity because not only do you want to measure it for yourself and the company, but your employee wants that feedback. They want to know that they're doing things right. Um, so it's important to provide that. And if, it's, if they're not, they want that feedback too. How can you help them become a better employee for you and, and for your, your, your company and for your client? So those are some things that I, I would recommend. As far as measuring productivity, there are obviously different ways to do that. Their output, uh, we enter time, so that's one way to do it. Um, if, if, a, if, a, if a manager really wants to, there are tools you could put on if you were concerned uh, to actually uh, see what people are doing on the computer. There's actually monitoring tools out there as well. So um, not every company needs that, but there's options out there from the technology. Yeah, so it's it's complicated, right? Like there's a lot of moving parts, and that's Perfect. why people hire you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you take a look at all the moving parts, and you're able to navigate that. You know, clearly, you know the business owners, um, you know, most times aren't subject matter experts on technology. They have their own niche. So um, again, that's, that's why they hire you. Uh, we did have a, a comment or a question come in for you, but I think you Perfect. addressed it. Uh, but if you want to add any additional thoughts. Uh, it says, do you have any suggestions for guiding your team remotely? And I think you, I think you pretty much covered that, right? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, what we found is when you're working remotely, it's even more. It almost seems more important to communicate now, right? Yeah. Because you know, you're, you're used to seeing people in the office. You can pass by them. Um, you know, you're going to see them at some point in time during the day. Now you know you're not going to see them. So I think it's important that um, if you're a manager, that, or even if you're an employee. Reporting in is really important. So if you have a set of tasks that you're working on um, or you're working on a sales, uh, you know, your sales, make sure that all that stuff is not only reported, but you have a meeting set up to go over it on a regular basis, whether that be daily or weekly or monthly. Those, those connections now have become 
absolutely critical because you can't, you know, you're not, you're not going to see everybody. So. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a great suggestion, and, and like you said too, I, I, what you what you said there was really key. The fact that you know sometimes you're passing by an office and you might just drop in and start having a conversation, or um, again, that need to to do the personal interaction is much different now. So to set up that time or to keep a regular open communication is really important. Right. Uh, so we're nearing the uh, the last few minutes here. Is there anything you'd like to add? We appreciate you being a guest today. You added quite sure. a bit. Of quite a bit of value to chamber chat live what else you want to discuss sure. i'll just say a couple of quick things that i looked up before i came on today and that is uh what are people going to do um come you know the end of june the end of july august september etc what are we all going to do and i think that none of us really knows uh some companies like facebook have said they're going to work 50 percent from home uh, but that's a big company uh, other companies just can't wait to get back in the office they really need to be most productive in the office but i think we wait and see but utilize technology to the to the greatest advantage you can. Seek out somebody who can help you out um, and to use that technology the best way. Uh, there are reports all over the place as to whether productivity is increasing or decreasing. They go, but reports go both ways. It really is up to the individual company and individual manager to figure out what works best, what works best for their team. Um, so I think that's important. And then lastly, I just want to touch on one thing. Yeah. If you're going to have people work from home, make sure they are working securely from a cybersecurity perspective. A couple quick tips, backups. If they have any data on their workstations at home, make sure there's some type of backup in place. Um, secure firewall and wireless are critical. Endpoint security, we used to call that antivirus, but some type of really solid and professional endpoint security. Um, great password, password managers are out there that you can get through the web that help people create great passwords and remember them. And of course, things like two-factor authentication. Um, so, you, you know, if you're going to have people work from home, you got to have all the technology, right? Like I said early on, but then they also want to make sure they're secure because if they're going to connect to you and your data, you don't want to have any problems with any kind of security breaches uh, that can be really uh, a challenge and, and cause a lot of frustration, a lot of lost time, uh, money and productivity. So. Yeah, all, all great recommendations. And for those folks who are in this environment right now, if you're business owners or you manage a large team and you need to integrate this into your company, um, you can firsthand right here. Brian's got the knowledge. So uh, please reach out to Brian Piquel at KP Interface. Brian, thanks for being a guest today. Greatly appreciate it. Bill, thank you to you in the chamber for having me. I appreciate it too. It was a great time. Yeah, you're welcome. Hopefully we'll be able to see you out in an event soon and we'll actually shake hands and uh, thank you that way as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Bill, looking forward to it. So, hey, all right, Brian, be before we get going, I wanted to ask you, uh, we had one question come out on one of the other pages and sure. uh, hopefully this isn't a curveball for you, but uh, we've been hearing from time to time a lot of these shenanigans uh, happening online with you know, uh, services like Zoom and some of the other um, live streaming type of services. Uh, what are your recommendations for organizations not to, um, you know, deal with like kind of embarrassing moments where uh, Zoom uh, type of uh, live interactions and stuff that are being happen online, like these live meetings and whatnot uh, being hijacked? Right. Is there anything that you would recommend from KP Interface with with regards to things like that? Yeah, sure. So one of the frustrating things in business nowadays with technology is the fact that you want to use it so that it's that you can take advantage of the ease of use of it, right? Get on, we can have a conversation, almost conduct business like we're in person, et cetera. But then you also have to be mindful of security, right? It's just like your bank account, right? Victory Bank knows this. You go, you want to have access on your phone to get to your accounts. Okay, but you want to enable two-factor authentication too. So what happens now with Zoom and GoToMeeting and others, what they're providing, of course, is you, know, you always have the option to not request uh, a passcode to get into a meeting. But now it's becoming almost default in most of these platforms to require a passcode. And I would urge people not to take that off. Uh, leave it there, or if it's not enabled, enable it, especially if you're having any conversation with any clients, anything pertaining to anything of any critical or sensitive nature make sure you have that on there. And that should prevent other people. The other thing, last thing is I would just say, Drew, is make sure that you're updating your software. You know, I know the Zoom is coming out almost every week, if not more, with an update. What they're doing is probably finding holes that they have in their system and realizing, hey, we want to update this so you don't get breached. 
Um, and a lot of people say, well, I don't want to do that now. Well, you know, make sure you do them on some type of regular basis. Get up to date. Great, great points. Uh, I appreciate you answering that or re-answering that uh, to specifically answer that type of question. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, what an amazing, amazing show here today. Uh, fantastic information. Listen, everybody, uh, do us a favor. If you're watching this live, uh, feel free to share this or please share this with uh, your social profiles, your groups, any of your local communities that we may not uh, be a part of. Uh, anyone that could uh, use and benefit from Brian's services, please go ahead and patronize him by heading over to kpinterface.com. Uh, check him out. Let him know that we sent you. Uh, I'm sure he and his company can uh, provide all kinds of guidance that you might require with all the types of uh, services that they provide uh, in, in internet services and that sort of thing. Uh, as always, our amazing uh, host, uh, Bill Vitiello of the Victory Bank and Chamber Chat did an amazing job. Uh, and on behalf of Eileen uh, over at the Tri-County Area Chamber of Commerce, thanks so much again uh, for this amazing platform to communicate and share other businesses uh, within our local community. Uh, so until next time, which will be actually this Wednesday, I believe at two o'clock, we'll be hosting another Chamber Chat Live. Make sure that you check in for that. Be on the lookout for that episode. Again, two o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, uh, we'll be doing another episode of Chamber Chat Live. If you own, own a local business and you're a part of the chamber, please reach out to us and let us know that you would like to be featured here on Chamber Chat as well. We'd love to connect with you and get you featured, find out all about your, your business and let the community know more about your business as well. So again, on behalf of our guest and uh, Chamber Chat, thanks so much for your attention today. Please go ahead and share this everywhere and be safe out there. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Drew. Thanks, Bill. Have a good day.